Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. We rejoice and be glad in it. Hey, hallelujah. Another day to worship him. Another day to praise him. Another day to give him honor and glory for who he is. He's so worthy. Hallelujah. Of all the honor, the glory, and all of our worship and all of our praise. We thank and praise God for another opportunity to come to you wherever you are. And we're praying that you're safe there. Amen. From hurt, harm, danger, destruction, and infection. Amen. So we come to worship now. It's worship time. Hallelujah. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Thank you. 
faithfulness, Lord, every day, every every hour. You're always there with us, Lord. We thank you. We thank you for being with us all the time. <laughs> Father God, you never turn away from us, Lord. You're always there. Even when we are down and out, you're there. When we're happy, you're there. Father God, we thank you. Every hour of a moment that has passed by, Lord, you have been there for us. You have healed our bodies. You have given us our homes. You have given us our vehicles. You have done all that. You've given us our, even our jobs, Lord. Everything that we have, you have allowed to happen. Lord, and we love you so much because of that, Father God. You are, you are so merciful. You are so forgiving. You are so loving, unconditional love, Father God. And you ask so little of us, Father God, and yet we still, we still stumble, we still fall, and we ask for forgiveness when we do, Father because you, you are who we should be reaching for. You are who we should be loving. You are, you are always there, and yet sometimes we go reach for our friends, our family, you know, to give us counseling or whatever, but you are the one that helps us through. You are the one that gives us the joy and the peace and the smiles in the morning, Lord. You're the one that gives the little birds singing and the, and the beautiful flowers and the grass growing and the things that, you know, are so nature that you, you have shown us. You are the greatest artist, Father mm -hmm. God. The painting that you do in the skies and the, and the sunset and the, you know, sunrise, Father God, that's your artwork, Father God. And we think you are so wonderful. So great is your faithfulness. Father God, we are want to be just as faithful to you, Father. And when we aren't, yeah, forgive Lord. us, Lord. Forgive us, yeah, Lord. Forgive us when we stumble and fall and, and our faithfulness goes somewhere else. Mm. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us, Lord. But great is your faithfulness, and we, we just praise you so for that. We praise your name, Lord. We praise your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
teach a lesson today comes to us out of the Old Testament book of Proverbs. Amen. The Old Testament book of Proverbs. I was going to start with the ninth chapter, but change that up and start with chapter 8. Amen. Proverbs chapter 8. We'll read the first 21 verses. Proverbs chapter 8, the first 21 verses. Amen. You will find it in, two, in your Bible. Amen. Uh, say at your home or wherever you are. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hear the word of the Lord. Does not wisdom call and does not understanding raise her voice? On the heights beside the way, at the crossroads, she takes her stand. Beside the gates in front of the town, at the entrance of the portal, she cries out to you, O people, I call, and my cry is to all that live. O simple ones, learn prudence, acquire intelligence. You who lack it, hear, for I will speak noble things, and from my lips will come what is right, for my mouth will utter truth. Wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are righteous. There is nothing twisted or crooked in them. They are all straight to one who understands and right to those who find knowledge. Take my instruction instead of silver or knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than jewels and all that you may desire cannot compare with her. I, wisdom, live with prudence and I attain knowledge and discretion. The fear of the Lord is hatred of evil, pride and arrogance and the way of evil and perverted speech I hate. I have good advice and sound wisdom. I have insight, I have strength. Be by me kings reign and rulers decree what is just. By me rulers rule and nobles all who govern rightly. I love those who love me and those who seek me diligently find me. Riches and honor are with me, enduring wealth and prosperity. My fruit is better than gold, even fine gold, and my yield than choice silver. I walk in the way of righteousness along the paths of justice, endowing with wealth those who love me and filling their treasures. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, understanding, and perform of this is holy word from all that dwell below the skies. Let that creator's praise arise. Thou shalt have no other gods before me.
So I'm going to go to the corner here.
our prayer time, we first come to praise God for who He is or worship Him, uh, adore Him, come to adore Him. And then we confess that we've uh, been sinners. We've made not just mistakes, we've done some stuff willingly that we know we shouldn't have done. So we come to confess. The Word of God says if we confess our sins, He's righteous and just to forgive us, cleanse us of all unrighteousness. So we confess. Then uh, we come to, 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 to just give him thanks for all that he's done. Um, somebody might say, well, I don't have a job right now. I'm uh, living from day to day, uh, rubbing two nickels together, trying to make a spark. I don't have uh, much of anything but can I be thankful for, you know, for all that breath that you just that you just expelled saying those words. You can be thankful for that. You can be thankful that last night wasn't your last night. You can be thankful that he woke you up this morning. And if you can understand what I'm saying, you're still clothed in your right mind. Amen. We got a lot to be thankful for. If you can still uh, have any kind of transportation, whether it's by your feet or a wheelchair. Amen. You got something to be thankful for. God's been good to us. After we thank him, then we can uh, we can ask him. Uh, the word in the Bible is supplication. We can go to him in prayer and ask him for what we need. We know that God is waiting to hear from us because he wants to know that we still depend upon him. We can't make it without him. He can open doors that no man can close and close doors that no man can open. Amen. And so we want to praise him. We want to thank him. And we want to ask him, amen. I want you to get your family together and gather around wherever y'all pray, coffee table, the sofa, dinner table, or your secret prayer closet. Let's go to the, to the Lord in prayer. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven earth is full of your glory. Glory be to you, Lord God, most high. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, First of all, to worship you for who you are. Oh God, you are high and lifted up. You're holy and you're almighty. You're omniscient, you know everything, God. And we're so thankful that you know the beginning from the end and everything in between. We thank you and praise you, God, that nothing goes without your detection. Hallelujah. And for, so, Father, we're praising you for always being righteous, always doing the right thing, for always, oh God, being just. Oh, hallelujah. For, Lord, not being a respecter of person, not taking any sides, God, but you hold us all to the same standard. And I say thank you for that. Hallelujah. Bless your holy name. God, we confess that we've not done what you told us to do, and we've done a whole lot of things you told us not to do. We ask God right now in the mighty name of Jesus and by the drippings of his blood that you would forgive us of our sin, cleanse us of all unrighteousness, and allow us to have true fellowship with you through your spirit. Oh God, not only that, but we thank you. We thank you for waking us up this morning, clothed in our right mind, for allowing us to sleep last night, God, without waking up for every sound and noise that was in the neighborhood or in our in our dwelling place. We praise you, God, that you gave us sweet sleep, God, and we were able to sleep through the night. Oh, God, thank you for peace and safety, hallelujah, in our homes or wherever we were, God. We praise and we bless you. We thank you for, hallelujah, food on the table or in the refrigerator or even in the store. That, Lord, you've given us the opportunity to get it, to buy it, to bring it home. Thank you, Lord, hallelujah. And then, oh, God, we come with supplication, God, to ask you, ask you, God, to keep our minds stayed on you. Uh, help us not to get caught up, Lord, in uh, all of the conspiracy theories that are going around. Help us, Lord, not to become uh, problematic children, God, children who are always demanding something. When you've given us, hallelujah, life, health, and strength, and Lord, you've given us a mind to think Help us then, God, to think according to your word and your way. 
that, Lord, we might know the truth, and the truth will, in fact, set us free. Hallelujah. Father, we're praying today, oh God, for all those who are protesting, those, Lord, who are uh, helping the protest be peaceful. We're praying for those, Lord, who are uh, doing what is right, protesting the injustice and systemic racism that's always been in this country. And God, we pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus that uh, we won't allow it to just fade away. But Lord, we'll stay uh, ever, uh, ever protesting until, Lord, justice does come down. We thank and we praise you, God, you've given us a voice and a heart and an understanding to know what, Lord, is not your way and your will. But help us, oh God, to stand up for what's right. Help us, oh God, then to be those who have a voice, uh, not according to our opinion, not according to what we feel, but according to your way of truth, oh God, that you are not a respecter of person. Help us, God. Help us, God. Help us, Lord. Father, we so adore you. We praise your holy name, Lord. And we know that we haven't been all that. We know that we've made mistakes, Father. We are so sorry, Father God. When we take a look back on years past, weeks, months, days, hours, moments, we can look back on all the mercy that you have given us over time, Lord. All the mistakes we have made that you have forgiven us, Father God. Your mercy endures forever, Lord. And when we look back on our past, Father, we can see how you've healed us, how you've helped our families, how you put roofs over our heads, how you gave us all good jobs or our jobs at all, Father God, how you gave us children, how you just continue to bless us even though we may have fallen on the wayside, you're still there blessing us. If we look back, I'm asking all of us to look back. Look back at his glory. Look back and ask how he's forgiven. Look back at things that he has forgotten now that we have done that we can't even forget. Father God, we love you. And when we look back, we see so much about you that we should be looking forward, just expecting and wanting to be with you forever, Father God. Oh, what a gracious Lord you have been. How merciful you have been. How forgiving you have been. Father God, because well, we, we know all of us has been through darkness. All of us has made stumbled and fallen. Father God, all of us who are adults at this point, you know, have been through something. But you have brought us through, Father God. And our children, Father God, we know they sometimes go through things, Father God, but they don't realize one day how you have brought them through, Father God. And we're asking you to continue to bless them, anoint them with and open up their hearts and souls to understand who you are and how much you are impacting their lives right now. Okay. Father God, we love you, we love you, we love you with every, every breath that we take, Father God, with every with blood that goes through our veins, Father God. You're doing all that, Father God. And those who have preceded us and come home to you, Father God, hallelujah, hallelujah, Father God, thank you. Thank you for their life. Thank you for their love. Thank you for, just thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. there's, there's so much to thank you for and be grateful for, for you, Father God. From you to you right now, we are saying we love you unconditionally we love you father god hallelujah to you lord and lord i'm just asking right now to bless all the in the sound of my voice bless all who are not in the sound anoint them father god with health happiness of uh, peace joy father god oh lord thank you for being with us thank you for loving us in jesus name we pray One more song before the preach word comes. Amen.
inspired by opinion and not knowledge, being inspired by the right to speak whatever I want to speak, whenever I want to speak, wherever I want to speak, to whoever I want to speak. You're being inspired by foolishness. And it's our responsibility to know the difference. Amen. And so this word that comes to us this morning is, is out of the book of, uh, I call it the book of wisdom, book of Proverbs, amen. And we read, uh, beginning with chapter 9, verses 1 through 21. I want to use for a sermon title, though, uh, verse 10. Verse 10 says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Knowledge of the holy is understanding. Let's pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, open our eyes that we might see, our ears that we might hear. But Lord, open up our hearts that we might receive your word. The Lord, cause our minds to become clear so that we might understand. We thank you and we praise you in advance for what you're going to tell us and what you're going to show us. Thank you in Jesus' name. Well, we've, uh, we're in a place now in our country where everybody's got an opinion and everybody has a right in this country to voice their opinion uh, because we believe in freedom of speech. The problem is, is 
Not everybody knows exactly what they're saying. And not a lot of what they say is based on truth. Uh, it might be based on some kind of fact or something that they saw on the internet, but so many people are being swayed by foolishness, by conspiracy theories, by their own opinion, and even what they feel. Well, I feel like this and, and I feel like that. Well, as Christians, we don't have the right to feel. We have the right, hallelujah, to believe. Believe in what he said and anchor that as our truth. Uh, we've been pushed around and bullied by ignorance. We've been pushed around and bullied by opinion, by theories and all kinds of stuff that have no basis of truth. But we are sometimes susceptible to believe what we hear because of who it comes from because of what letters are behind their names or what uh, office they hold. We're, we're sus suspicious about other folk who might have the truth, but uh, we don't know if they have it or the truth, but it sounds good, and after all, they've got a show, and uh, they're on the radio or they're on TV, and so they must know what they're talking about. But this word says that wisdom is the, the primary thing. The, Proverbs 9 and 10 says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord. So, so let's look at that. So am I supposed to be afraid of God? I thought I was supposed to be afraid of the terror by night, of the arrow that flies by day, Psalms 91, that we quote all the time. I didn't think I was supposed to be afraid of the Lord. Well, this word fear here has another understanding. And, th and that word really derives the word respect. Respect or reverence the Lord. I, I reverence him. I reverence him as, as being the God of creation. I reverence him as being the Lord of Lord and the King of Kings. I reverence him as being all-knowing, all-powerful. I reverence him that way. So I believe whatever he says is in fact the truth. And anything that comes from somewhere else, I really have to be suspicious about it. As a matter of fact, I have to look at it and, and analyze it according to his word. We have become a culture now who will believe anything but the word of God. As though he is coming up with some kind of a, a theory. No, no. He is the way, the truth, and the life. It is his word. I heard a brother say the other day, he was on a show uh, and he was saying you can't believe anything that a man wrote. And so he's saying if the Bible was written by men, you can't believe it. Wait a minute. The Bible is inspired by God, but it is written by men. And if you had, a, if you had enough time to take, and take a look at it, analyze it, and see if there was any historical truth to it, you would be able to shut your mouth and say this is in fact the truth. This isn't something somebody made up. It isn't some kind of fairy tale. It's not a fable. It's not something that somebody came up with, and, uh, a bunch of men in a smoky room, and, and they were coming up with theories. No, no, this is, in fact, the word of God. Those who are scoffing at it, those who don't say it's the truth, those who just say it's the opinion of 66 different writers are wrong. The thing of it is, is they haven't investigated it. It's just their opinion. It's just their own self-analysis, not based on anything but a feeling they have. And, and here's the good thing. The good thing about God's word is it stood, it stood the test of time. It stood for thousands of years. It hasn't changed. It says the same thing and there's life in it. Not only life, there's promise of life. There's promises in his word. And, and he says that in all your getting of wisdom, get understanding. Uh, the problem with, 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 with the church community today, at least in our country, is that most Christians don't know the Word of God. Most of us have not read the whole thing. But most of us have not studied any of it. And a lot of us just use it when we're in trouble. Because we need a, a band-aid to, to help us get through the night. Some kind of salve or some kind of ointment. And so I'll go get the book of Psalms and and I, I, I'll use it like it's it's a band-aid on a bullet wound. And, and I'll try to put it on me and soothe me when I'm worried. Even though I've got no, no kind of fellowship with the Lord. Even though 
I wouldn't know his voice. Or if I heard it, it would scare me to death. Even though I'm not trafficking in the truth, I use it sometimes to make me feel better. Well, the word of truth, the word of God is in fact a way of life. It's not just a, a Sunday thing. Amen. And as, as we found out during this pandemic, it's got nothing to do with just Sunday, does it? No, no, it's an everyday thing. The goodness of this time that we've gone through is that it's challenging us to put God into our everyday life, into our everyday existence. Amen. To go to him all the time in prayer because we don't know what's around the corner. It's not predicted that we'll have tomorrow. It's not predicted that we will be healthy. And because during this pandemic, we have had to face the fact that I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. The day is different than than last week, and last week was different from the week before. Everything's different. I don't know what's going on, and check this out. Nobody else does either. The Lord knows, and he's asking for us to learn more about him, his way, and his will for our life. So he says, in all you're getting, get understanding. Amen. Get understanding. So the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So, so Fear is really reverence of the Lord. But what do I reverence about him? Well, I reverence that he has the truth, number one. He is the truth. What he says is true. It's not an opinion. It's not some kind of theory that somebody came up with. No, no. It is, in fact, the truth. How do you know it's the truth? Well, Jesus not only went to the cross and died, but he got up. And when he got up with all power in his hands, it wasn't like uh, one person saw him or it's just his disciples that saw him, just, just the 12. No, no, no. He was seen by more than 500 people after he rose from the dead. Uh, well, did you know that, brother? You, you scoffer, you. Did you know that, sister, who says this is just an opinion? Did, did you know that? Did you read that? Or you just come up with your own conclusion of well, who God is and what he does and that this thing is not the truth? Oh, my goodness. You know, one of the things that's ruining our country. It's ruining, it's ruining our church. Amen. The, the body of Christ all over the world is these scoffers who are in the midst of the church. They're in the midst and they're saying, oh, I don't believe that. Uh, that can't be that way. And they are messing up the minds of people who don't know the difference. People who won't study, who are waiting to hear a good word. And because they don't know the truth, they can't be set free. So with the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, not only do I have to reverence him, respect him, and respect his word, I can also respect his way. Well, what do you mean his way? Well, his ways, the Bible says, are not our ways. They're higher than our ways. Uh, what, what does that mean? That means that he doesn't do things the way we would want him to do them. He doesn't do things the way we would do them. We Hallelujah. We, we act out a reaction, but he's got a plan, and his plan does not change. It's a master plan. He knows what he's doing. He knows how to get his people to where they need to be. He knows how to get us through, and you've just got to trust his way. Well, his way means sometimes you've got to wait. Amen. And you know we don't like to wait. We want everything instant. We want everything right now. And if we can't get it right now, then we want an explanation as to why we can't get it right now. Wisdom sometimes says, I need to shut my mouth and just be quiet. I, I need to understand what God is doing. Because if I know, according to Romans, all things work together for the good of those who love him and of those who call according to his purpose, then i got to believe his way is always going to be the best way. It may not be my way, but it'll be the best way for me. Sometimes that means that, that whatever I believe I need, I really don't need it at all. Because if I get it, it's only going to pull me further away from the Lord. A lot of us would want to hit the lottery. A lot of us still playing. But the Lord says, no, because if you hit the lottery, you're not going to do what you say you're going to do. You're not going to give the church this money. You're going to skip on off and forget about me. No, no, Lord, I'll no longer see you in the house. I'll no longer hear your prayers at night. I'll no longer know that you need me anymore. You'll discard me. As, like, as though an old piece of Kleenex is thrown away after you blow your nose. God knows that who we are. He knows what's in our heart. And so 
He's looking for our good, and our good for him is that we might dwell with him in peace and safety forever. But in order for that to happen, we've got to be transformed into something that looks more like his son and looks like us. And so the, so the fear of the Lord is first his fear of his, hallelujah, to reverence him. The second thing is, is the fear of of his way and the third thing would be the fear of his will you know we want to do a lot of things according to what we want and if we really looked at it it'd be our will and not his will we sing the song thy way thy will O lord not mine and yet we really don't mean it we just sing it because it sounds good well his will and his way for us might be something that's not going to feel good for us but you know what he says that we need to crucify our flesh. And in crucifying our flesh, that means our flesh don't get what it wants, what it desires, what it craves. Sometimes, not a sometimes, all the time, our flesh is trying to do that which is against God. Amen. Amen. That's why the flesh has to be crucified. Amen. I don't know if you know it or not, but the flesh is not going to go to heaven. The flesh is never going to be on trial. Amen. So the flesh can act the fool all it wants to. Because in the judgment, only the soul is going to show up. And when the soul shows up, it's going to be answering for all that the flesh did. That's why it's time for us to finally say, if I'm going to be responsible, if I'm going to see the goodness of God in the land of the living, it's time for me to learn what he wants from me. It's time for me to learn what, he, what he's trying to get me to do. It's time for me to understand his word, his way, and his will for my life. Proverbs says, in all you're getting, get understanding. You can, you can have wisdom and not understand what the wisdom is for. You can have knowledge and not, not know how to use it. And the only thing that's going to bring you to that understanding, the only thing that's going to get you to the place where you know how to use wisdom in a way that's productive is through the Word of God. We've dismissed it. All of us have one. But the question is, is do we read it? And then, when we read it, do we understand it? In the book of Acts, the Ethiopian, Ethiopian unit comes upon one of the disciples. Matter of fact, comes across Stephen. And he stops by an oasis, and, and he asks Stephen, he says, uh, I've been reading the scroll, the book of Isaiah, and it talks about a man uh, who was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquity. Who is this man talking about? And Stephen starts to open up the scripture for him and open up his understanding. And the eunuch says, uh, so how can I understand it unless somebody helps me? Well, a lot of us have not sought help because, you know, uh, the real truth is we're ashamed. We're ashamed that we know so little. We're ashamed that we've been in this thing for such a long time and don't have any kind of wisdom about it. We're ashamed that it does not really control our lives or we don't allow it to lead and guide us into all righteousness. We're, we're ashamed and so we won't go to anybody and say, you know, I, I, I need to know more, I need to understand more. So we just stay away. Yeah, if the, oh, if the church is based upon the number of people in Bible study, in prayer meetings, I'm not talking about any individual church, I'm talking about the general church, then the church would have fallen off the cliff a long time ago because you can't even get one-tenth of the people to come to study the Word. You can't even get one-tenth of the people to come out for something that's extra where this, they're going to learn and, and have more understanding of what this thing is all about. We don't reject it. We just leave it alone. In all that getting, get understanding. Proverbs 4 and 7 says it's, it's the principal thing. It's the foundation. There's so many men who are not in church because men have concluded it is just the word of a man. Men have concluded it's, it's not provable. Men have concluded that, that they're just given the, the preacher money. They're just giving the preacher free stuff. And so men have concluded it's not for me. But men have never studied it. 
men have never investigated. Men have never opened it up. Men have never allowed it to speak to them. Men have never seen themselves in any of those circumstances or situations. But if a man would stop, and if he would look at it, he would see himself, oh, you know what? This sounds like uh, a Joshua. You know what? This sounds like Caleb. I, I remember I told everybody this was the way to go, but nobody believed me. And they went the other way. And now we got catastrophe. Now we got calamity. If they would have listened, a man would see himself in this thing. Uh, he would see himself as, as one of the disciples who really was didn't know anything. Like, like Peter. Peter was an unlearned man. Didn't have the letters. Couldn't, couldn't read. But he had faith, faith to believe that what God said was true. And he moved and God, hallelujah, proclaimed that he would be the head of the church. My brothers, I'm speaking to you specifically now. It's time for you to quit voicing your opinion and being a scoffer. Because your scoffing is not based on anything but your feeling and your right to have your own opinion. Open that book up and read it. See what it says. Matter of fact, I challenge you to read it all the way through and then come back to me and tell me that it's unbelievable. I challenge you. I challenge you to, to read it and get any part of it and say this can't be true because it contradicts itself. I, I, I challenge you to come to a Bible study then and, and allow yourself to learn challenge you. It's time for you to quit being a scoffer because these promises that are in this book <coughs> of long life and many days have to do with you getting wisdom. You can't get wisdom as long as you're scoffing. Amen. Last word. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewned out seven pillars. Those pillars, those pillars help us to understand what we do, what we should do. Hallelujah. As a matter, amen. As a matter of fact, what we should do is, verse 6 says, forsake foolishness and live and go the way of understanding. Forsake foolishness. Give instruction to a wise man and he will be still wiser. Teach a just man and he will increase in learning. For the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. For by me your days will be multiplied and your years of life will be added to you. If you are wise, you are wise for yourself. If you scoff, you bear it alone. Well, brothers and sisters, it's time for us to learn the way of the Lord. His ways are perfect. They are, they are marvelous. They are, oh my goodness, they are incredible. His ways always lead to his glory. And if you're in the way that leads to his glory, you'll be glorified on the way to glorify him. It's time for us to be wise. It's time for us to fear the Lord. Because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Won't you finally become wise today? Finally put off uh, all of this false information, or, or even if it's even if it's not false, even if it's real. Won't you quit allowing it to vex your spirit and your, your joy? Won't you allow it? Won't you allow yourself now to come into the joy of the Lord? That the joy of the Lord will be your strength? Our brothers and sisters, God has allowed us to be segregated now from one another in the body, at least in the building. But he's allowed us to come together in the spirit that we might be on one accord. We can do that, but you can only do it through the wisdom of God. With all your wisdom, all your getting, you get understanding. Let's pray. Father, we've been bombarded by information, Lord, because of the media, because
because we now can get other people's opinion and see their face on different platforms. Because God, we can listen to podcasts, non-reality shows, trying to be reality, Lord, and all kinds of stuff that has gotten into our way and become nothing but a distraction from the truth. God, we know that you're from everlasting to everlasting and nothing about you changes. And Lord, we're thankful of that. Lord, right now in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we ask you to help us then push aside, put under our feet, cancel all the stuff that's trying to come into our understanding and cloud our, uh, hallelujah, our knowledge of you. Help us, O oh God, to seek that wisdom. For you said in the book of James, if we ask for wisdom, it will be given to us. And it will be given to us liberally. Let us ask for wisdom. We know the beginning of wisdom is the fear, the reverence of you. So help us, Lord, reverence you. Help us, Lord, to hold you high. Help us, Lord, to give you honor, glory, and praise, and worship. Help us, Lord, to give you that that, that the world doesn't know about. Hallelujah. Total respect for who you are. God, we believe your word is the truth. Now help us to stand on it and put everything else under our feet that we might show the world, yeah, we are different. And the difference is we know the truth. And the truth has set us free. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Somebody might finally want to come out of the world today. The world has been lying to you, let me say that. With all assurance, the world has been lying to you. Here are some results from us. The world will tell you all kinds of things, and the world will use you for its own purpose and for its own glory. And when the Lord has found and when the when the world has found you no longer useful to them, the world will cast you away. The world will tell you you're no good. You're, you've got no purpose. Kick you to the curb. Throw you under the bus. And discard you. But the Lord will lift you up. He will give you life. Not just in this world, but in the world to come. He's got a reservation with your name on it. Amen. A place in the heavens not built with hands. Hallelujah. And he wants you to be there forever with him in a place where there's only joy, no sorrowful tears, no disappointment. My, my. Amen. He wants you to be there with him. How can I assure that? How can I get my reservation? Well, he says, if you confess in your heart, if you believe, amen, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that that God has raised Jesus from the dead and that he's your Lord and Savior, you shall be saved. This is only the beginning, my brothers and sisters. Once you do that, then start to seek him. Seek him with all that's in you. And you can seek him through his word. Amen. He's not mysterious. He's not in heaven where nobody can bring him down. He's not under the earth where nobody can bring him up. Where is he? The word says he's in your mouth. That is the word of confession. When you confess him, hallelujah, you become a part of the family. If you haven't done that today, take the time and do it right now. You don't have to say anything elaborate. Uh, because we're now quarantined or we're we're stay at home, you can stay, you can say it right right where you are. You don't have to wait till the church opens back up. I, I want to wait till the no, no, don't don't wait. Do it today. Amen. Because once you're in, then all of those promises pertain to you. And he becomes now your protection. He becomes obligated to take care of you. Won't you obligate the Lord today? All you got to do is confess his name as Lord and Savior and turn your back on the ways of the world. Turn your back on the ways of the evil one. Amen. And come unto Jesus just as you are. Hallelujah. This is the day of your salvation. Hearken to the voice of the Lord. Amen. Amen.
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It's time for our offering. Hallelujah. If you've got your offering, you've already given it. Praise the Lord. We sanctify it now. Won't you bow your head with me? So we thank God for it. Father, thank you for the gifts and thank you for the givers. Thank you for those who, Lord, given online, those who send their uh, uh, their gifts through the mail, those who dropped it off at church. Lord, we just thank you so much for the gift and we thank you for the givers. Now, God, we ask you to bless both the gift and the giver. And Lord, we ask you to multiply it. That might be used for your glory. Hallelujah. To bring more souls into the kingdom. And Lord, then to teach those, hallelujah, who are in the kingdom of your manifold wisdom and your riches. Father, we thank you and we praise you. We ask you to receive these gifts now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 This is work week uh, 13, you all. Week 13 that we've been out of the, the, the building. And we're thanking and praising God that he's kept us all these weeks. And his promise is he'll always keep us, never leave us or forsake us. So let's thank him. Amen. Thank him every day. Thank him when you wake up. Thank him when you go to bed. Thank him during the day. And let others know that you're thanking him. Amen. Because we believe that God is, in fact, our blessing. Amen. Thank you for spending this time with us today. We're praying God's richest blessings on you. His hedge of protection around you. And we pray in his peace. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God from